your monthly dose of astronomy news and views. This is Awesome Astronomy. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! Happy Hanukkah! Happy Holidays! And welcome to our Awesome Astronomy end of year and holiday special. In this episode that we've slipped into your stocking, we have a round of astronomy in 2013, a look forward to 2014, a Christmas present to give out to one lucky listener in our Astronomy Now and European Southern Observatory competition, and the usual barrage of outtakes and bloopers from recording 12 hours of awesome astronomy in varying degrees of sobriety over the past year. Wake up, Paulie. There's no exclusion principle for sleepyheads. We've got presents to open. <coughs> what? What? Oh, it's morning again already. Did the old guy with the white hair empty his sack in my sock drawer again? Such a strange earth custom. Ah. What did you say his name was? Jim? Jib? Jimmy? I'm not sure. Anyway, on with Christmas. Yay! And while you're all pretending to like each other and every present you got on this fine Christmas morn until the Doctor Who Christmas special takes your minds off family feuds and a week of turkey-based cuisine, we thought we'd entertain you with an awesome astronomy festive episode. No, it's a distraction while we transport over with tripods and heat rays to pillage their presents and slave Rudolph. I know, but we said we'd have to ruse. We had one shot to distract them and you gave the game away. Oh, uh, no. No, wait, we can just start again. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, Merry Christmas! <sighs> what, they're just going to forget what you said about the heat rays? Paul, we don't want them to hear us squabbling. We always said that if we had any arguments, we could settle it without it affecting the children. Well, you've messed it up. This is my first awesome astronomy Christmas. I thought it was going to be special. Oh, she had Tom was in the end of your special. I thought this year... Oh, I, oh Ralph, I thought... I thought... <gasps> Come on, mate. Cheer her up. It will be special. Tell you what, John the sound guy and Damien the... Pff, lackey? They're still slaving away. Go on, bog a few orders at them. It's Christmas! John! It's Christmas! Put some festive music on that matches your mood. Yes, master. Are you taking the piss? Sorry, sir. That was some mood lifting music I was listening to last night. Damien! Damien! Yes, master. Sleep well last night? Not really. This uniform does chafe a bit. I don't know how John Carter put up with it. Stop snivelling. It's Christmas and we've got a treat for you. Oh, good. Thank you, sir. Yes, yes, you can start cooking Christmas dinner and we'll criticise as we eat it, just like your Earth tradition. Thank you, sirs. Damn dirty aliens. What was that? Damn dirty dust, sir. Worse than the moon, sir. This is Awesome Astronomy. So, while the bird's in the oven and we're waiting for Damien to stuff it, let's take a look back over 2013. Ralph, what were the standout moments over the last year? Well, first up for me has to be the double header on the 15th mm. of February, and as it's Christmas, please permit me to reminisce a little. Oh, please do. Well, it was a clear and crisp winter morn, as I recollect, and I was disturbed from my slumbers by the shrill sound of Falco's Rock Me Amadeus. An unwise ringtone, you might think, and you'd be right, but it heralded a phone call from your good self announcing that you were whoring yourself to the BBC yet again <laughs> for a radio and then a TV interview with Marcus Chown about the flyby of asteroid 2012 DA14 that was going to be whipping past the Earth well inside the orbit of the Moon. And lo and behold, that spectacular news was put in the shade by pictures of a 20-metre-wide space rock searing through the atmosphere at 12 miles per second, 30 times brighter than the sun, over Chelyabinsk, Russia. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't make it up. And then I had to watch you give in, well, a frankly enjoyable and non-sensationalist perspective on TV, but judging by the clothes you were wearing, you clearly thought it was still Christmas. I mean, obviously the good lady wife didn't approve your wardrobe selection that day. <laughs> so... <laughs> what my pick of the events of 2013 is the asteroid flyby and the meteor streak into the sky. My body memory is always going to be that jumper you were wearing. <laughs> <laughs> but that, yeah, that, that was yet another reminder that we need to find a way to deflect meteors pretty sharpish or we might go the way of the dinosaurs any moment. 
well, yes, uh, and frivolity aside, it it wasn't even a more devastating iron composition, and it eventually hit the ground in an unpopulated area, but almost 1,500 people were injured by the airborne shockwave, flying debris, and radiation alone. One person suffered a broken spine, the radiation caused burns to some people's skin and retinas, and shattered glass and buildings injured many more. And you only have to see the incidence of meteor strikes on Earth and amount of near-Earth objects being discovered to realise that this is a waiting game. You know, it's going to happen unless we find a way to deflect these things. The only upside is, if you can call it an upside, we don't know if it's going to happen tomorrow or in 100,000 years' time. Yeah, and many asteroids that buzz past us don't even get detected until they've already sailed on by. Uh, We may not always be so lucky. Anyway, Merry Christmas, everyone. (laughs) So what's next? What else did you enjoy in 2013? What's wrong with my jumper? Um, <clears throat> well, uh, this has been an astronomy gift that just keeps on giving. Well, until it was declared an ex exoplanet hunting spacecraft in August this year. I think the discovery of the first exoplanet in 1992 and subsequent discoveries of planets around other stars have spawned a branch of astronomy that remains fresh and exciting because it's all the gradual advancement towards finding the Holy Grail, the Earth analogue with biosignatures in its atmosphere or a signal that could be detected. And no instruments achieved more in this hunt than Kepler, which only last month revealed another 833 exoplanet candidates, 10 of which are thought to be less than twice the size of Earth and in their habitable zones. Yeah, and this takes Kepler's tally of planetary candidates up to 3,538, with the majority of planets being Neptune-sized worlds, followed by Mm super-Earth-sized worlds, that's between one and a quarter to two times the size of Earth, followed by Earth-sized planets, of which nearly a 1,000 have been discovered. Mm. And there's still plenty of data to be analysed from this incredible craft. So what's your next pick for 2013 then, Paul? Well, um, until it malfunctions, I think the Curiosity rover is going to be an annual highlight. Mm. Um, Last year, we were all excited about sky cranes and laser beams on Mars. And this year, we got project scientist John Grotzinger getting excited with an ultimately hyperbolic statement suggesting Curiosity had found something earth-shaking. But this year, the rover did find a site on Mars where water once flowed, uh, a stream bed, and the instrumentation on board was able to show that the water in that stream was pH neutral, drinkable. Um, and shortly after, it showed that Mars rocks contained 2% water wherever it had been sampled. Cool. Yep. So, what's your next highlight for 2013, Ralph? Oh, we we can't ignore Voyager, can we? No, I mean, we've, no. we've had this has it, hasn't it saga about Voyager for over a year now. And yes. if I had to have made a bet at the time, I'd have said that it would have taken at least another year or two before we could say that Voyager 1 has left the solar system. But nope, it came this year. Voyager 1 became Earth's first interstellar emissary on the 25th of August 2012. And while that happened last year, we only realised that this year. So it's this year's news. Yeah. Well, what a great year 2013 was for astronomy. NASA and ESA have excelled themselves. Yet again. And we have some nice opportunities for amateur astronomers to observe an asteroid, 2012 DA14. And comet pan stars, of mm-hmm. course. Not as bright as we'd hope, but a lovely binocular oh, object great. with a nice clear tail above the horizon. Yeah, and views of Saturn, mm. penumbral eclipse, Jupiter back high up on oh, the yeah. sky, and now the eagerly awaited comet Ison. Yeah, good year. Now, Damien, hand us one of our presents. What have we got to play with next year? This is Awesome Astronomy. Uh, to Paul, Merry Christmas from Ralph. Oh, thanks, mate. Oh, what have we got? Oh, oh cool. C2013 A1 siding spring should pass within 90,000 miles of the surface of Mars on the 19th of October 2014. Was this causing meteor showers or even bombardments that fleet of rovers and satellites at Mars might be able to photograph? Ah, oh, so cool. Well, so now 90,000 miles sounds like a long way um, from the planet, but remember that comets have these bloated comas containing gas and dust that extend for millions of miles from the nucleus. Oh, these humans have such short memories. I was only talking about this in the main episode this month. I know, I know. I might even pay for their impertinence. Thanks, mate. But moving on, we have curiosity and opportunity at different locations on the surface with Mars Express and the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter looking down. And the Mars Orbiter mission and Maven arriving in orbit just a month before the meteor shower to increase the chances of images or even debris damage. (laughs) (laughs) So satellites could, but probably won't, get Mm. damaged and we might even get to see a Martian meteor shower. Come on then, shake a leg, Damien, without another present here to open. To Ralph. 
Thanks for making our lives a little less miserable this year. From John, the bloody traitor. Ooh, the writing on the paper's in French. What's this? Oh, excellent. I've been so excited about this since last month's interview. Because ESA's Rosetta spacecraft meets up with comet Churyumov Gerasimenko after 10 years of chasing this comet's orbit. The main part of the mission is going to fly in formation with the comet as it makes its latest approach to the sun. And from August 2014, it'll begin analysing the comet. Then in November, a lander is going to descend onto the comet's nucleus and surf the comet as it swings around the sun. This 17-month analysis should reveal far more about comets, their composition and their potential for harbouring the precursor chemicals of life than any previous mission or observations. This is something that I'm really looking forward to, so thanks for that present, Paul. Uh, actually, that John got you that one. Well, I'm not humouring his ridiculous sycophancy, so thanks very much, Paul. Cheers. <coughs> Damien, more mulled wine. And here's the next one for you, mate. Merry Christmas. Oh, well, what do we have here? Hmm, sounds like it needs batteries. Uh, one day we will rise and crush your Martian skulls. Merry Christmas from Damien. Oh, that's nice. The slave can write. Oh. So what did he steal? Oh, Gaia, very thoughtful. I might not test the new heat ray on you now. So, let's see what the box says. Uh, launch of ESA's Gaia spacecraft. That's going to map a billion stars. Test Einstein's theory of general relativity to a far greater precision. Discover brown dwarfs, asteroids and comets. Ah, that's quite incredible. So, it, it's launch slipped back to this month in order to test and validate some spacecraft hardware that is used on Gaia and found to have malfunctioned on another mission. Um, its current launch window ends in early January, and next year we'll see the first results from this incredible spacecraft. Nice. So, uh, Ralph, I, uh, I got you a little something we can share. Really? Oh, look at the size of that! Ta-da! NASA's MAVEN and the Indian Space Research Organization's Mars Orbiter mission both reach Mars in September next year. They're both examining the Martian atmosphere to determine how and when that atmosphere and the flowing water were lost into space, and the Indian orbiter will also investigate the intriguing trace amounts of methane detected by the Europeans, methane being a result of either tectonic activity or organic metabolism, if it is there at all. This is Awesome Astronomy. Right, so in the main show this month, we set up a competition and we had a fantastic prize of a year's Astronomy Now subscription and the fantastic 2014 European Southern Observatory calendar. Mm -hmm. So without further ado, um, the lucky winner is... Do we need a drum roll? No expense spared. Uh, Sam Blayen from Ireland. Well done. <laughs> So, congratulations, and we'll get both of those sent out to you right away. This is Awesome Astronomy. Well, as we've enjoyed recording an extra episode this month, we thought we'd carry it on. So starting from next month, we'll be bringing you a separate sky guide a few days before the beginning of February, and the main show will be released, as usual, on the 1st of February. So that's two shows a month from now on. Yay! Yeah. And that's not all. Each episode will be animated on our YouTube channel. Just look for Awesome Astronomy on YouTube. And the Sky Guide includes sky maps, advice on where to look for our invasion fleet, and images of the objects we suggest to give you a better idea of what you're looking for. So the next show will be the 1st of January, with a Sky Guide for February towards the end of January. Does that make sense? Not really. No. But now we have to run the annual ignominy of the Christmas outtakes. Yep, dignity on hold. Happy holidays, everyone. See you See in the, you the new year. year. This is Awesome Astronomy. Are you coming in, darling? Or is that just the way you're walking? Hello, this is Ralph and Paul from Awesome Astronomy, and you can find us at www.awesomeastronomy.com. Dot com. Dot com. Fnaf, fnaf. Crikey, it's the Rosers. <laughs> okay, right, one take. One take, one take. Yeah, don't, don't, go, don't go far. This ain't going to take me long. <laughs> this month's moon is well-timed to the Perseids and should be... Uh, we start the month with a 24-day... Right. 
take 24. This month's... Oh, f*** it. You were doing so oh, well. It was going so well. <laughs> oh. That's going to be a long night. Oh, Carl Sagan would be proud. Carl Sagan? Who's he? <laughs> billions and billions. <laughs> That was a really bad impression. No, that was good. I like that. You like one. that one? Yeah. There are stars around the universe, billions and billions. No, oh, God, that sounds so contrived. <laughs> this show contrived. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? I'm not, I'm not going to swear oh. this time. I'm, I'm going <laughs> to. How big would the impact object need to be to create a crater? If you create a crater. <laughs> Thanks for that, John. <sighs> Entropy. Feel the energy leaking out of me. Feel its thermal equilibrium washing over me. Oh, I am dying of entropy. Most of them were in line with the Greco Roman naming tradition of giving them names. Uh, most of them. The Perseids are famous for high zenithal alu. <laughs> That's such a mouthful. Most of them were in line with this Greco Roman naming tradition where they have to. Pisciots. Uh, <laughs> Pissheads. <laughs> Most of them were in line with the Greco Roman naming tradition of naming somebody that looks a little bit like Gandalf. No, <laughs> looks like Gandalf. I haven't said f once yet. Oh. Mm. The Perseids are famous for high zenithal owl. owl. <laughs> <laughs> owl They're rates. definitely the Pissheads. You love owls. Most of them were in line with the Greco-Roman naming tradition of naming them after... No. <sighs> <laughs> there is also a spectacular imaging target in Ro... Oh, fuck I. Fuck I. Ro... Ro... Complex. Most of them were in line with the Greco-Roman... Roman. <laughs> 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 a fire guy. A fire guy. Oh, a fire guy complex. Row a fire guy complex. Most of them were in line with the Greco Roman naming tradition of naming them after people that look a bit. What is it? Looks like. <laughs> Need some interlude music, don't we? The universe is littered with galaxies, all with a halo of globular clusters. That's my... Lloyd Grossman. That's my Lloyd Grossman. <laughs> <laughs> the IAU don't want to take naming out of the public hands, but they could have advised SETI as to what names were ad... F***. Yeah, they don't want to call the moon f***. <laughs> Pluto. 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 Uranus, new moon <laughs> Uranus could have Puck following the... I uh, bottom. Yes. <laughs> Bottom should be an orbit around Uranus. It's a Shakespeare character. Oh, it's a Shakespeare so well. character. And from the right play as well. Exactly. Oh, hold on. Was it Midsummer Night's Dream? Yeah, well, yeah Midsummer Night's Dream. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. yeah, he's an ass. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that worked. Do I mention that you're in your pyjamas? Lounge pants. Lounge pants. <laughs> Ralph is wearing lounge pants. <laughs> pyjamas. That's all because on the evening of the 19th of July, the Cassini probe, which has been all in a. <laughs> oh, it's that moon again. It's in orbit around. <laughs> newly discovered moon of Saturn. Who lives in a globular cluster like Love this? this. <laughs> <laughs> Crack is the rosters. <laughs> Most galaxies have a supermassive black hole in their centre, and by supermassive we mean billions or bollocks. <laughs> bollocks. <laughs> Famously, in the middle of black holes, bollocks. Bollocks in the centre of black hole. Supermassive bollocks. <laughs> and you can hear how that sounds when the oscillations are converted into audio as two blips. One faint one from October and a louder one from April. Ah! Ah! It's cold out here. Sorry. I'm going to edit this. Sorry. <laughs> <sighs> I know that does sound incredibly contrived. You want to say yeah, something to that effect? Yeah. Go with whatever you're comfortable with. What? Oh, that would be incredible. <sighs> Do my trousers up. <laughs> Help! The staff. <laughs> That's in a fire, Kai.
Yeah. <laughs> the <laughs> overs complex. <laughs> uh. ba ba the death of stars. Bum, 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 the death of stars. We're all gonna die in a big fireball. Come on, a genius. Come on, guys. Come on, a genius. Please do continue to send your. <sighs> I haven't said enough. After more surveying. Surveying, surveying. Looking. <laughs> Searching. Searching. Which one of uh, Mars's moons is it that's gonna be breaking up as well? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> then we won't put that in. <laughs> right then. Oh, me. <laughs> Anytime, Ralph. Um, and of course, the stacking software will rotate it anyway, won't it? Well, actually, no. Oh. No, it doesn't. So you probably don't want to mention that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind being an idiot. <laughs> you want to see my elephant impression? Oh, well done. <laughs> One day, we'll do one of these in, like, one take. Do you think? Yeah. It's going well, though. Going really well. Ah. <laughs> Your bit, not mine. Venus. It's there. Find it yourself. Venus! Uh, Las, Las Vegas! Vegas. Da, 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 da. <sighs> it will plunge behind the sun when it reaches... Oh, for <laughs> <f***'s> sake. <laughs> <laughs> like two suns in the sky! <sighs> oh, I hope it... Crashes into the sun because everyone should be so f***ing miserable. <laughs> wagga wagga. Oh, so shall I, shall I do your elf? EX. So the upshot of that is what we don't know. Gee, <laughs> northern, northern. Crikey, it's the Rosers! Crikey, it's the Rosers! No scaling back to low Earth orbit in a short lived space station this time as we have a full scale J mission of. Oh. <laughs> I was thinking a deeper breath needed. I didn't have to, so was I. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, ah, I got enough air for this sentence. <laughs> Crikey, it's the Rosers. <sighs> right. Oh, you got that one in. Got that one in, yeah. Hey. <laughs> Bye. I love you, baby. Oh, do you? Oh, that was just. For you. I've been waiting for you to say that. <laughs> Look at the size of his tripod. I'm hearing your breathing coming through. <sighs> Well, stop doing it then. Stop touching me like that. That cannot go in the Christmas outtakes. <laughs> right. That would be just as dangerous to me as it would to you, so that won't be going in. <laughs> okay, here we go. Paul, we don't want them to hear us squabbling. We always said that if we had any arguments, we could settle it without affecting the... Bollocks. <laughs> we don't want it to affect the bollocks. <laughs> Oh, that sounded contrived. Uh, contrived this show. <laughs> Abandon ship. Abandon ship. Right, We're, right. We're all gonna die. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ralph. I'm really sorry. Celebration of a sentence well delivered. Yeah. I don't want it to end. I like the studio. This is awesome astronomy. So we're back here in the dungeon then? Yeah, it looks like it. One day. One day we'll bash the smug level. Yeah. So in the meantime, you tampered with the blooper reel yet? Oh, come on. Some of that stuff they originally left out was funny. And it made them look stupid. They really seem to enjoy that turkey stuffing. <laughs> yeah. I really need to thank the banter herders for that. Well, you can get probed first then. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Awesome Astronomy is produced by Ralph Wilkins, Paul Hill, Damian Phillips, and John Wildridge, and is free to distribute for educational purposes. Music is courtesy of Star Salzman. For more astronomy news, views, help and advice, visit our website at www.awesomeastronomy.com. You can join in the astronomy discussion on our Facebook group, and you can follow us on Twitter at AwesomeAstroPod. We invite your questions to read out on the show. 
you can send them to us by Facebook, Twitter, or by email at the show at awesomeastronomy.com. We thank you very much for listening. From Cydonia Base, end of transmission. Sorry, we're all out of outtakes. Happy New Year.